This is Haiku, which is the capital of Hainan State in China. There are more than 2 million people living there, but it's not even in the top 50 cities in the country in terms of population. The city is small compared to others in China, but it is full of tall buildings, including skyscrapers, all of which were built since 2000. Things are going to change soon, though. The new rule that says China can't build very tall buildings has been greatly expanded. From now on, even smaller skyscrapers will not be allowed in places like this. More rules have been put in place in China's bigger towns as well. What made the country with the most towers change its mind in such a big way? You may remember our film from July 2020, in which we talked about some pretty strange news from China. The Ministry of Housing and Urban Rural Development of the country had just made it illegal to build anything taller than 500 meters, and those who wanted to go higher than 250 meters were given a lot of rules to follow. It also stopped the copycat design trend, in which towns built big, slightly off-kilter copies of famous buildings from around the world. There were some experts who thought China's obsession with skyscrapers would end at some point. However, many people were shocked when China announced it would not be adding any more buildings to the list of the world's largest. Something else the government said in October 2021 is what makes things really interesting. Now, towns with less than 3 million people won't be able to build any buildings. There will be no more building that is higher than 150 meters. That's the official height at which a building becomes a skyscraper. Plus, buildings in bigger towns will be limited to 250 meters, which is less than half the height of China's largest buildings. But if a small city really needs a new building, they may still be able to get an exception, but they can't be taller than 250 meters. A bigger city could also go higher if it had a good reason. But if it wants to go over 500 meters, it's not going to happen. There will be no more Shanghai Towers or Ping and Finance Centers. After the 100-meter mark, there are even new rules to follow. More than that, and a building will have to meet certain fire and earthquake safety standards. So the question is, why? China was doing great before, right? It has been growing at amazing rates since the 1980s. Didn't the building boom help that happen? Some experts kind of saw these new rules coming so not everyone was that shocked by them. There are new rules, but I'm not surprised at all. In the last few years, China's government has started to pay more attention to the quality of buildings and the way towns are set up. In the UK, Dr. Fi Chen is a senior lecturer at the School of Architecture at the University of Liverpool. She knows a lot about public areas and urban planning. You already know that China's development rate has been really fast and amazing over the past 30 years. A lot of buildings were made quickly, so they weren't up to high standards or quality. The Chinese government knows about this issue. Fears about quality have only grown, and things like this video of a building in Shenzhen, shaking out of control going viral in May 2021 haven't helped. Also, officials want to stop more vanity projects, which are buildings that are built more to show off than to meet a real need. Sometimes these buildings have more floor space than could ever be used, and the plans don't seem to take much into account the area around them. There are also the really bad cases, big money problems during the building of skyscrapers, like Golden Finance 117, have left some towns with unfinished buildings. This is a story we've told before on this show. Another reason is that many buildings cause high wind pressures and the urban heat island effect, which are bad for the environment. They can also make it harder for cities to run their transportation systems. There is also a social worry because most of those buildings don't belong where they are. This is because most Chinese towns still have a lot of old buildings from when they were first built. Most of them are also low-rise. By focusing on small towns that haven't been through as much growth yet, we can keep them from getting crowded with big buildings that aren't needed. The new rules make it clear what you shouldn't do, but they don't go into great length about what you should do. Dr. Chen thinks this is because Chinese towns are very different from one area to the next, making it hard to use a one-size-fits-all method. China is a big country, and each city has a very different amount of growth and historical relics. It's hard for a paper from the central government to tell you what to do. Instead, local governments, managers, and builders are told to make their own decisions and make sure that the designs they come up with fit in with the existing environment. They shouldn't go for crazy heights, designs, or both. Everything makes sense, but why is this happening now? Is it connected to something else that happened in China in 2021 that got everyone's attention? The ongoing real estate problem is what we're talking about. Big developers like Evergrande, which is one of the biggest in China, are having a hard time paying off their huge bills, selling off their homes, and getting new loans. There's a lot to do with how the economy has changed right now. 
they have been pushing the circle economy in their own country for the past few years because they don't think that high foreign trade will work in the long term. There are a lot of ghost towns in the rural places where people have built homes but no one wants to live there. While the new rules can't change what happened, they might help keep fights like this from happening again in the future. However, this is a complicated problem that can't be solved by limiting heights alone. Most of the responses have been positive. Some people might be sad that we'll never see another Chinese megatol again, but it was probably the right choice. Smaller towns will have to find new ways to get known in the future. It looks like China's never-ending growth has reached a new stage where the economy and architecture of its towns are more important than ever.